Good morning. Welcome to the lesson 10 of industrial instrumentation. In this lesson, we will study uh, LVDT. The full form of LVDT is the linear variable differential transformer. It is basically an inductive uh, based sensor or inductance based sensor and primarily it is used for the measurement of displacement. However, I can use it for measurement of pressure and other uh, process parameter also. In this uh, particular lesson, we will consider the uh, lesson, I mean the basic uh, concept of the LVDT, its uh, circuitry, its signal conditioning circuits and its basic constructions and how you design an LVDT. These are the basic things which we will discuss. Even though I have not written uh, the contents of this lesson will be the LVDT, its construction, its signal conditioning circuit, lead network, lag network, uh, phase sensitive demodulation circuit as well as some design equations of LVDT. So, at the end of this lesson, the viewers will know the basic construction of LVDT, what are the signal conditioning circuits that are to be used, what are the precautions uh, you have to make it, its sensitivity, all those things will be studied in details in this particular lesson. It is a sensor for displacement measurement. You see this is our uh, basic LVDT, you can see here that you have a primary here. There are three windings, look at very carefully. We have one primary and two secondaries, two similar exactly identical secondaries, right? Actually, uh, uh, should we also, uh, if I take, um, should we also Yeah. So, the excitation voltage will be here, it will come here and AC excitation voltage. So, it will be uh, uh, any voltage between 3 to 15 uh, volts and 50 to 20 kilohertz and two different secondaries. Here we can see the basic construction. You see here the on a bobbin the primary are owned, primary is owned and the two secondaries are owned in this fashion, right. Later on we will see that we will uh, uh, connect these two secondaries in oppositions that will come later on. And you see there is a core, iron core which will move up and down, right. This is iron core which will move up and down. Interestingly you see that if this core moves up, so there will be more linkage between this and this. So, the mutual inductance between this coil and this coil will increase and mutual inductance between this coil and this coil will decrease. So, at geometrical null position mutual inductance between this and this and this primary and this secondary and this primary and this secondary will remain same, right. Now, uh, let us go to the uh, instrumentation lab of IIT Kharagpur and have a look on the LVDT. Uh, you see here this is a, an LVDT linear variable differential transformer. It has uh, one primary and two secondary. The secondaries are usually connected in opposition to get a null position and to after doing the phase sensitive demodulations, I can sense on which side of the which side of the null position my the core lies. You see here the core is there, soft iron core, which will move like this, which will move like this. So now I am moving, I mean it is, it, uh, I mean it will move like this. And then since there are two secondaries, what will happen if you put in opposition, uh, obviously uh, you will get some output voltage and at null, when it is at them exactly at the null position, the so two secondary coils will be, output voltage will be nullified and I will get zero voltage. But any position other than that will give you non-zero output voltage. So, LVDT already we have discussed in detail. So, this is actually pictorial view of the LVDT. Welcome back to classroom again. So, we have seen the uh, construction of an LVDT and how it works. Actually, this core will, uh, if you look at this core, this core will move up and down. 
this core will move up and down and I will get the different mutual inductance also the voltage also will be changed and there will be phase difference between the input and output. So, that is actually we, uh, we have written in a, in a nice way you see the flux formed by the primary is linked to the two secondary coils inducing an A it will be an, an AC voltage in each an iron core which moves through the bobbin without contact provides a path for magnetic flux linkage between the coils. The position of the iron core controls the mutual inductance between the primary and two secondary coils. This is most important thing, right? And usually we find the entire LVDT assembly we put in some cases we will put an under another casing so that the it will not be influenced by the other external magnetic field. Obviously, it depends on the magnetic fields. So, uh, in some cases we will find that we put the entire assembly so that the mag external magnetic field will not affect the output voltage because our, we want that our output voltage will be, uh, will be a function of the position of the core of the LVDT. Now see this is the uh, we have given the uh, in the um, if you look at the screen you see we have given the excitation voltage the sinusoidal voltage in the primary and the two secondaries are identical. So, obviously I will get two secondary voltages E1 and E2. We are assuming in these cases that the um, uh, core is in null position that is geometric null position. So, I am getting excitations of equal phase difference between in the between input and output this is our input or excitations I am not giving but telling it input because input in the case of LVTT is the displacement which will give on the core and output is the output voltage and in this case is E1 and E2 right. Now you see that there is a equal phase difference between input since the two are secondary coils are identical in nature so there will be equal phase difference in the two. So, you have seen that uh, if you con uh, not consider you might be there will be some alternation obviously there will be no question of amplification. So, there will be some alternations we will get, but we have ignored that part. So, we have assumed that they will get the equal magnitude in the both secondaries. Now, uh, secondaries now you see uh, LVDT we never use two secondaries separately. We always put the two secondaries in opposition what is that thing if you look at the board our digital board you see here that excitations we are giving here this is the core positions we are 3 to 15 volts 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz we are giving and output voltage you see the two secondaries here these two secondaries are in opposite there is no connection at this point please note there is no connection at this point. So, this is one secondary and it is connected to the bottom and it is coming like this one. What is the advantage of this one? You see in these cases advantage is when this core is at the geometric null position you will find that the output voltage E naught will be 0. So, if I put this core slightly up and slightly down I will get a non-zero output voltage right. So, if I put this core slightly up I will get a non-zero output voltage because what will happen in this case the two secondary output voltage are exactly in opposition and this two will cancel out I will not get any voltage at the output right. Now, see this is the output voltage you have drawn okay, with respect to time when for the different positions of the cores since these two code since these two secondaries are in opposition you will find if you look at the board or in the opposition so you will find that core this is the core at the null position theoretically this should be exactly 0. So, see here even though we are giving some excitation voltage which is sinusoidal voltage I am not getting output voltage since the two secondary voltage will cancel each other. Whereas, you see when this core is above null I will get a vol voltage like this one with a phase shift if the core is below null I will get a phase shift a 180 degree phase shift okay, separate uh, opposite to the core above null exactly got it. This is necessary because in some situation I must know in the which position of the core lies in which position whether it is above null or below null. You see here what will happen it is slightly we are getting like this one right. So, you see these two phases are exactly out that means it is 180 degree out of phase 
Right? There is a phase difference between this and uh, input voltage and this or excitation voltage and this and excitation voltage and this, but these two voltages when the core is above null and when core is below null, the two phase difference is exactly 180 degree out of phase. Now you see uh, this is the our now we have uh, I mean taken the magnitude of the output voltage, right? We have taken that is the reason we have employed, written here E naught mod, absolute value of the output voltage we have taken. Now I change the position of the core and measure the output voltage, right? For suppose for one x centimeter, one centimeter, what is the output voltage I have plotted? Then for x equal to two centimeter, what is the output voltage I have taken? For x equal to three centimeter, what are the output voltage I have taken, right? And these voltages I have plotted like this. Clear? So you see, we are getting a linear curve. That means the relation between the displacement and the output voltage when the core is in op when the secondary is in oppositions, exactly we are getting a relationship of linear. I mean linear relationship we are getting. So at the geometric null position, so you see, we are not getting an output voltage. Right? Now this is the what is plus x? What is minus x? Plus x. If I move the core in one side of the Suppose, I mean if I take the um, looks like this one, suppose I have a core here, right? This is my output voltage, x not. So, this is the position x equal to suppose 0. If I put it up, suppose of this position. So, if I put it I, I am taking it positive displacement, if it put it down I get a negative displacement. So, in that respect I am calling it plus x and minus x. Now, if I put on the other side of the null position, I will also get the voltages obviously it is phase shift, but if I take a magnitude, so I want the phase shift, I cannot identify that phase shifts, just if I take the absolute value. So, you see that I will get a curve like this one. And this, I mean, you see, it is falling down because at that position, what will happen? I am taking the core totally out of the bobbin. In that type of situations, it will fall like this in both the cases. It is when it is going up, it is going out, and it is when it is going down, like this one. You see, I am getting a straight line, straight line relationship, like this one. So, this is our, I mean, the absolute value, the absolute output voltage of the LVDT when in series of position versus the position of the core, right? Now, applying KVL, if I take the equivalent circuits, if you if look at, I mean, I mean, applying KVL on the primary side, I can write, you see, IP, RP plus LP DIP by DT minus EX equal to 0 and IP equal to EX RP plus LP D second if I go back, uh, if I look at, um, I think that will be better. If I go back here, yeah, this is actually uh, should be, yes, I am sorry. You see, this is our equivalent circuit of LVDT. Uh, we have taken here this inductance is LP, primary inductance, this is primary resistance RP, this excitation voltage EX, and this is the resistance of the. Uh, there are two secondaries, we are taking the if you assume the two are exactly identical. So, I can take this inductance is LS by 2, this resistance is RS by 2. So, we will get a simplified equation. This is the M1 is the mutual inductance between the uh, primary and the one of the secondary. This M2 is the mutual inductance between primary and one of the secondary. This is the output voltage ES1 and this is the output voltage ES2 that means voltage source here and this is RS2 and this for the time being we have not connected. So, we are connecting an RM a meter impedance okay, when there is a current is flowing through the this circuit. right? 
So, if I now draw the I mean write the KVL around this loop, I want to write the KVL around this, so that means in the primary side I will get uh, uh, if I go back. See if I now see ES1 and ES2 will try to induce voltage in the primary. However, this will nullify since it is in series opposition, right? What is ES1 and ES2? So, already we have seen. So, if the ES1 and ES2 will try to induce the voltage in the primary, and this will nullify since it will be is in series opposition. Now, if I uh, go back, you see, you can see here. So, you see, this is our uh, basic equations. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, you see here, if I apply a KVL around primary sites, I will get equation like this. And already we have seen the equivalent circuits of an LBDT. So, if I apply the KVLs, I will get equation like this one IPRP plus LP DIP by DT. Now, you see, and uh, so IP equal to EX, where D is the operator. So, as before, we know what is D. We know that D equal to D equal to D by uh, DT, right? D by DT. So, that is the uh, operator. Okay. So, I can come back you see here and E x equal to R p plus L p d, d and induced secondary voltage E s 1 is M 1 d i p by d t and E s 2 E s 2 and E s 1 already we have seen what is this. Uh, if I go back you see E s 1 is this one and E s 2 is this thing. right? So, this is the induced secondary voltage. right? So, this is our actual equation. So, you see the induced secondary voltage this is applying on the primary sides, but in the secondary sides this will induce a voltage like this one M E S 1 equal to E S 2 E S 1 equal to M 1 D I P by D T and E S 2 equal to M 2 D I P by D T. Okay. So, all with respect to the, uh, the primary current. right? Now, you see uh, This is the already we have discussed. Now, let us look at. So, E s 1 and E s 2 will try to induce voltages in the primary. However, this will nullify since it is in series opposition. So, find the, so that problem. So, the net secondary voltage if I look at E s or E naught whatever you say equal to E s 1 minus E s 2. This will be equal to the me if you look at the expressions which you have seen. So, M 1 minus M 2 D i p by d t because E s 1 equal to M 1 into D i p by d t and E s 2 equal to M 2 into D i p by d t. So, E s 1 minus E s 2 M 1 into minus M 2 D i P by D T. The net mutual inductance M 1 minus M 2 varies linearly with the core motion. For a particular core position E naught equal to E s equal to M 1 minus M 2 D operator L P D plus R P E x right excitation voltage. Now, you see this E naught by E x I can write excitation output voltage by if I normalize the output it will be m 1 minus m 2 by r p d operator tau p d plus 1 where tau p equal to l p by r p. right? Now, you see here that uh, this is the time constant. So, this is a first order system. So, it is a time constant on the system. Now, E naught by E x if I look at now obviously, what will happen? What is the x? What is the position? Position is here in the inside the this is M1 and M2 because this is directly proportional to the position of the core, is not it? This M1 and M2 directly depends on the position of the core. So, you see this output voltage also depends on this value of the M1. So, all other things will remain constant, M1 will vary and M2 also will vary. While the if I move the core up, then what will happen? If they move the core up, what will happen? The M1 will increase, M2 will decrease. If I decrease the, if I make the core down, M2 will increase and M1 will decrease, is not it? 
So, there it is this x is hidden within this m 1 and m 2. So, obviously, this output voltage will be proportional to the position of the code or x right. So, if I write in the uh, frequency domain, so it will be like this one m 1 minus m 2 r p square under the square root omega tau p square plus 1 with an angle phi it is not come. So, the angle will look like this right. So, this is the magnitude this is the magnitude part and this is the your phase part. So, what is phase let us look at. So, you see the phase is equal to pi by 2 minus tan inverse omega tau p right. So, the phase also depends on the frequency tau p is a constant. So, in fact, I can make omega tau p constant because tau p does not depends on the position of the core is not it tau p depends on L p and R p you see here this is a constant for a particular rigidity. Omega is the excitation frequency if I keep constant it will also remain constant. So, phi equal to pi by 2 minus tan inverse omega tau p this will remain constant for a particular excitation frequency. If necessary I can make it 0 also if I can cancel if I make tan inverse omega tau p equal to exactly equal to pi by 2. So, this will be cancelled there will be no more, but sometimes this is not possible. So, you will use some lag network or lead network to kill the phase uh, phase and I mean lag or lead right. So, I can make the phase compensation with simple RC circuit. Let us look at that. If the input impedance of the voltmeter now you see the all the analysis so far whatever we have made we are assuming that the there is no current is flowing to the secondary. Current is not flowing to the secondary because we are assuming that the we are measuring this impedance we are connecting that secondary is open circuit, but most of the cases it is not true secondary we must we will connect some, but you can say to some I mean if I to, to some extent I mean approximation this is also true because we will connect a very high input image suppose if I connect a uh, CRO cathode ray oscilloscope to measure the voltage output E naught. So, obviously, it is a very high input impedance. So, in that type of situation so R m will be very high. So, I can assume almost that the uh, your secondary is open circuit, but if I assume so the I s will be 0, but obviously if I take the finite case if you take you assume that the there is some current is flowing to the secondary. So, in that case we assume that the finite resistance R m meter resistance is R m and a current I s is flowing to the secondary, because if you take a finite resistance R m so obviously the current also will flow. Previous analysis we have seen that there is no current is flowing to the uh, secondary only two voltages E s 1 and E s 2 was induced due to, due to the mutual inductance between the primary and the two secondaries right. So, in that type of situations my equation is if I look at the digital board it will look like I p R p plus L p D I p minus M 1 minus M 2 D I s equal to uh, minus e to the power it e x subscript x equal to 0. So, if I can write this equation m 1 minus m 2 this will be equal to uh, d i p plus r s plus r m i s plus l s d i s equal to 0. So, if I I mean take all this so I can write the simplification equations e naught by e I mean e x d m 1 minus m 2 whole square l p l s d square plus L p R s plus R m L s R p d plus R s plus R m R p right this equation number 3. So, lag network as I told you we need some lead and lag network. So, lag network looks like this one you see this is a phase this is a circuit if there is a there is a lagging phase angle if there is a phase angle is lagging in that situation. So, we will connect x i d a this is our lag and network. So, it will kill the um, lag and it will have the output voltage will be in phase with the input voltage. It is not very important most of the cases you will find right. So, this is a lag network for compensation of the leading phase angle. If the phase angle is leading we can use this lag network. Lead network similarly if it is lagging phase angle I can use a lead network. So, lead network just interchange with capacitors and the induct and capacitors and the resistance I will get a lead network. So, it is a leading phase angle it will look like this one. The frequency of excitation voltage applied to the primary winding can range from 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The power requirement is usually less than 1 watt 
and the sensitivities of different LVTTs vary from 0 0.02 to 0.2 volt per millimeter of displacement per volt of excitation applied to the primary coil, right. This is typical sensitivity, it is very sensitive devices. Now, you see most important thing of the LVTT is, you see it is a displacement sensor, as I told you, but directly you can displacement, in the in other case you can use it for, you can so many, you can use it for a load sensor, you can use it for a um, uh, pressure, if you use it in conjunction with the diaphragm. <coughs> You will find it is used as a, um, uh, as a uh, pressure sensor. You can use it as a uh, flow meter. If you connect a, uh, you see that if you connect a, uh, to the bob of a rotor meter, you will find that this will be used as, an, uh, as a flow meter as indication of the flow. So, all these different I mean applications are there, but the directly it is actually measuring the displacement. Now, other type of simplest uh, form of displacement measurement is just a potentiometer. Okay. A simple potentiometer, if I uh, look at you see, if I connect like this one, suppose I have a like this one. So, let me take another page that will be better or I will take a different color. You see what will happen? So, I have connect, sorry. Let me take a new page. A simple resistance, a rheostat or a potentiometer, pot what we call. Suppose I have a wiper or jockey, in the case of potentiometer we call it wiper, in the case of I mean rheostat we call it jockey. So, if the jockey moves in these directions, then what will happen? I will give some excitation voltage suppose and I am measuring the voltage on this one E naught. Suppose this excitation, so then what will happen? This output voltage will be a function of this displacement, is not it? Suppose this is x. So, this simple a potentiometer can also be used as a I mean as a I mean uh, displacement sensor. However, the difference between the potentiometer and the first of all the potentiometer and the LVTT number one is the its resolution. Resolution of LVTT is extremely good. Please note the resolution good means its numerical value will be less. And another thing is you will find that sensitivity in the both the cases I can change. I can change the excitation voltage EX, the excitation voltage of the if I look at the digital class, I mean if, if I change the excitation voltage my output will also will increase or I can modify the sense. I am not talking about the I am talking about the resolution. Resolution in fine, you see that whenever a potentiometer, if I look at the digital class, uh, you will find that the potentiometer here what will happen? You see, it will even though I am showing here that it is getting contact only one, uh, one, one turns, but you will see the actual potentiometer looks like this one, is not it? So, it will always this wiper will contact more than one or two windings. So, resolution will basically depend how closely you make the windings, you are, it, is, it is possible for you to make the windings as well as whether the, whether the uh, this wiper or jockey is getting connected to one winding or two windings. But that is not the case in the case of, LV, I mean, that is not the case for LVDT. So, LVDT what will happen, you see there is no contact between the between the wiper which is basically a core, movable core and either primary or secondary. So, the resolution I could say it is I mean I mean it is first of all life will also increase. You see here it in the case of if you look at the digital class, you see that what will happen and that in this case that this core will this wiper will move and after a few use you will find this wear and tear it is called it is this contact will be will become noisy because the contact also depends on how much pressures you are giving. That type of case does not arise in the case of LVDT because LVDT I have core this bobbin and inside the bobbin this core is moving is not it. So, there is no physical contact. So, life is almost infinity you can say the mean time between failure is very very high. Moreover resolution is also high because resolution here is very, very small. I mean small means I mean good, extremely high because in this case you see there is no, there is no question of 
even though whatever the windings we have on the outside that does not depend, that does not matter how fine and how close those windings is not it because the resolution here depends on the, the magnetic linkage between the two. It does not depend on the physical position or the physical number of coils which is get in touch with the wiper. So, that is the great advantage of the LVDT. So, that is we have seen, see, uh, we have written you see there is no contact between the core and the coils therefore, the friction is eliminated thereby giving infinite resolution and no hysteresis. This is another important. You see in the case of potential meter there will be certain amount of hysteresis you will find, but there is no hysteresis in this case. No contact also ensures that life will be very long with no significant deteriorations of performance over this period. The small core mass and the freedom from the friction give the sensor, uh, gives the sensor the some capability for dynamic measurements. Now, phase sensitive demodulation is very important in the case of LVDT because LVDT we have seen that if the core moves up and down, I mean if I look at you see if I, we have seen that I have a primary and two secondaries. Like this one, you see this moves. See, moves up and down. What will happen? I will get output. No, is not it. See, if I move up, I will get some sinusoidal voltage. If I move down, I will also get the same sinusoidal voltage. But how will I know on which side of this one, whether it is lying, sorry, whether it is lying up the mid position, null position, or below the null positions? So for that reason, I have to make the phase sensitive demodulation of the side, I mean the output. If I can make phase sensitive demodulation, that means in that case, we will separately fully rectify the output to a two secondary voltage, then make the algebraic sum of the two. So, one side I will get positive voltage, other side I will get a negative voltage, right. You see, this is a phase sensitive demodulation circuit. You see, the each half is actually rectified with a full wave rectifier. In all the cases whether if this is positive, this is negative, you will find the current is flowing to this direction. If this side more positive and this side is more negative, current is also flowing to the same direction through the resistance R. Similar the case in the lower half, that means in the other secondary. So, this two voltages, these two voltages we are making algebraic sum. If I can make this algebraic sum, then what will happen? You will find that the output voltage, polarity of the output voltage will depend on the position of the core that means whether the core is above null or below null right if it is above null it will be positive if you assume a positive if it is this core is below null it will be negative right so this is a phase sensitive demodulation circuit now see the dynamic displacement measurements if the LVDT is to be used to measure dynamic displacement, the carrier frequency should be 10 times greater than the highest frequency component in the dynamic signal. We will show the phase and dimension output after few slides. The excitation voltage ranges from 3 to 15 volts, right? Because in some situations I may need to make the dynamic measurements, even though frequency should not be that high. So, for dynamic measurement, the frequency of the excitation voltage should be much greater than the frequency of the core movement. If a frequency ratio of 10 is to 1 or more is feasible, a simple RC filter may be adequate. Now, this is plus C, obviously, this we, since it is fully rectified, so it is DC, even though our excitation voltage is AC, now our uh, output is DC because the uh, two secondaries we are fully rectified and we are adding it algebraically. So, the output voltage will look like this one. I am sorry. Let me take another pitch. So, right. So, this is our output voltage, this is positive, this is minus E naught, this is x plus x 0, this is minus x. As I told you, plus x minus x nothing but the above null or the one side of the null is positive. If one side of the core movement is positive, one side of the null of the core movement is positive, other side of the uh, movement on the other side of the uh, null is we are taking needs. So, you see we are distinctly we are getting is a linear relationship, but along with the change in the magnitude this is very now I can tell whether it is above null or below null looking at the voltages this is very important. Look at the digital class if I look at 
you will find that the effect goes below null. So, obviously, what will happen? So, the I will get a negative voltage. Now, this is you see the uh, again we are coming back to our RC circuits, which is used for uh, I mean our simple RC circuits to make our um, uh, for dynamic measurements. In that case, the carrier frequency should be much higher. That means, excitation frequency should be at least 10 times higher than the maximum expecting dynamic signal in the LVDT, right. That means, what is dynamic signal here? Dynamic signal is the movement of the core is the input, right. Input is the movement of the, so that input component frequency of the dynamic input component should be 10 times lower than the frequency of the excitations of the LVDT, clear. So, if I have that type of I can have a simple RC filters. So, this is a first order RC filter. So, that will suffice that I can extract the origin signal. So, the response will look like you see E 1 by E naught this output voltage C 1 by E naught. So, it is minus 20 dB per decade. So, it is a corner frequency omega equal to 1 by tau right. So, low pass filters and its frequency response. Now, another thing even though I said that in the case of LVDT you see that uh, the two uh, two secondaries are exactly identical, but you know it is very difficult absolutely difficult to make two um, secondaries exactly identical and the harmonics also will be present in the secondaries right. So, this will create problem that means this will make our uh, our circuit this will make our circuit in such a way that I would not get 0 voltage at geometric null position right. That is the thing we see in the harmonics in the excitation voltage if I look at the st and stray capacitance between the primary and secondary will lead to non-zero voltage at geometric null position of the code. The mismatch of the two secondaries plays also plays a role in generating this null voltage as shown in the figure 12 sorry. You see this is a null voltage it is supposed to be 0, but there is a so the figure 2 is a null voltage. So, this you see here the null voltage it is the voltage non zero I mean voltage I am getting at the geometric null position right. Because making two identical secondary is almost impossible right. So, what will happen that will be some non zero voltage will remain actually what will happen if I look at the I mean vector diagram it looks like this. So, the two secondaries should be like this one ok. You see the this is the, if the secondary current I s 1 this I s 2 if these two cancels it will look like that. But actually what I have due to mismatch you will find one will be like this one other one which is this one I s 1 I s 2. So, the resultant will go like this one in this case the resultant will go like this right if I take a different color. So, the resultant will go like this whereas in this case the resultant will go like this. So, clearly I am getting non zero voltages right. Now, this null voltage is a nuisance we must kill it. So, there are various circuits available to kill this null voltage. One of the voltage you see uh, null voltage reduction circuit when the center tap primary excitation voltage source is available. If you have the center tap uh, primary excitation voltage source I can use this type of circuits where you have seen that so this uh, center tap is grounded sorry this is not ground actually this is a core motion. So, it will uh, come like this one it will come out like this one right and you see here. So, uh, I have a center tap primary source is available. So, this is the center tap is grounded with the ground of the uh, one of the output terminals and now I am getting outputs. In this case case you will find the output voltage will be uh, the null voltage will be 0 right. Now, figure 13 in next figure will show that the if the center tap uh, excitation voltage is not available how it can kill this um, null voltage it will look like this one you see the figure 14 the null voltage reduction circuit when the center tap primary voltage source is not available. You see here this will vary this position you see center tap is not available 2 potentiometers it is dropped this is grounded this again is that previous case it is grounded. So, this will vary ok we will vary the position of the this is potentiometer it is all the uh, I mean voltage is come across the potentiometer we will change the position of the core position of the wiper. So, that the output voltage will become 0. 
So, we have 14 shows actually method for null voltage reduction when center tap excitation voltage is not available. Here the potentiometer is adjusted until the minimum null voltage reading is obtained. If it cannot 0, we can make, if we cannot make it 0, make it minimum. So, that uh, uh, that will be that means at a 0 null position that is some minimum voltages uh, we will get that will suffice in most of the cases. Now, how to design this LVTT? So, this thing must you must see this is our see schematic of our LVTT even though you see that these are the two primary uh, windings this is the primary windings okay? because you see this is basically a cylinder sort of thing right. It is cylinder I mean here we have the this core you see this iron core. So, this is our primary okay, is a coil like this one is the primary and two second identical secondaries. Uh, now, you see this length of the secondary we have given S this length of the primary we have given P second two identical secondary of equal length and R i and R 0 is the um, is R i is the inner radii and inner R i and R 0 are the inner and outer radii of the LVT or assembly I should say and L A is the length of the armature or length of the core right. This is our movable core please note. Now, net induced EMF of the secondary coil is will be given by this you see here. So, this is our net induced EMF in the output E j omega j omega I p 4 pi n p n s mu naught p x upon 3 s natural log r o by r i 1 minus x square by 2 p square equation number 4, where omega is the frequency of excitation voltage in radians per second okay. and i p is the primary current, n p n s are the number of turns of primary and secondary windings and r naught and r i is the outer and inner radii of the LVDT assembly I should say and displacement of the core from the x is the displacement of the core from null position from right from the beginnings we have used that one and mu naught is the permeability of free space 4 pi 10 to the power minus 7. Now, if you look at the nonlinearity term, this is our nonlinearity term you look at this is our nonlinearity term is not it x square minus upon 2 p square this is the nonlinearity term in the LVDT right. So, the nonlinearity term x square minus by 2 p square in equation 4 is dependent on the length of the primary winding p for a desired range of x max and the error due to nonlinearity I mean epsilon the length of the primary winding is given by this p equal to x max uh, upon root 2 into epsilon. So, this is actually the uh, length of the primary. So, we will get from these expressions question number 5 and the length of the secondary winding is also given by this expression s equal to p plus x max. The length of the core and the length of the secondary are kept little more to accommodate the small spacing between the primary and its secondary windings right. This is necessary and you see if you look at so this uh, ratio in fact this will be ratio the ratio of r i by l a is about uh, 0 0.05 and the ratio of R o by R i varies between 2 and 8. The number of secondary turns should be as large as possible to produce larger sensitivity and since it is likely to be connected to high input impedance amplifier quite obviously and the meter the secondary windings can be of finer wear. Right? Now, you see that in a practical cases we will find it is very difficult to actually uh, uh, commercially if you are not available I mean LVT is not, you can make your own LVT even though we have made in our laboratory also according to you need, but it is an excellent and it is a uh, it is an application even though I say that the uh, its applications in the measurement of I mean process parameter measurement that means it is usually used for the measurement of displacement uh, along with the uh, uh, so along with the displacement uh, with the uh, it is used for the measurements of the pressure if I use a diaphragm gauge okay, and it can be used for the measurement of uh, in the in measurement of I mean uh, flow. So, in the case of diaphragm you see what, how it is used if I look at you see here you see you find what they do if I look at the digital class. So, I have a stretch diaphragm.
right. So, if I in increase the pressure on this side, you see this diaphragm will be stretched like this. We will study this diaphragm very well. Now, you see this uh, interesting thing is that, that the linearity of the diaphragm depends on the how much is the displacement. Less is the displacement, we will have the better linearity that means pressure versus. So, if I now connect a core of LVDT like this one primary to secondary right output voltage I have a getting excitation E x. Now, you see what will happen as the pressure increases I will get that this core will move from the null position. I will get a non-zero output voltage E naught. I would not need any phase change demodulations of that type of thing, this is not necessary because in the case in these cases diaphragm will move only in one direction, it will never move in this direction clear. So, this will give you the output voltage, non-zero output voltage right. Now, this is the one applications of LVDT, other applications of LVDT if I look at you said that we have seen that the rotameter in many places. So, we have a, core, have a channel like this one. So, the float is here. So, the flow is in this direction, it is coming out in this direction. So, what they do with the grommet ceiling, they connect a core here, same similar two secondaries in opposition. Okay. See if I draw it nicely, it looks like this. You see, so I have a So, I have a bob here and it is flowing like this one, the ceiling is there. So, output voltage, now E naught sorry E x. So, what will happen if the bob moves, this float moves, I will get a non zero output voltage. So, the voltage will increase on the output side quite obvious in the case of rotameter also as the flow increases this flow float will go up and up. This is another example of an LVDT. I can put some more examples. One of the examples of the another I mean uh, sorry pressure sensors will find that you know that our Burdo gauges basically depends on a this type of pressure measurements. So, okay. A C tube okay, let me draw it nicely we have a C tube like this one. Okay. So, this tip movement I can this tip movement I can connect an a if I connect an core of the LVDT here again this will come here and this will go here E naught this excitation what will happen you see if the core moves then what will happen if the if the pressure increases as you know this tip will try to move out if it move out so within the what will happen so this position of the core will move out move from the change from the null position so i will get output voltage so even though measuring pressures i am getting electrical output even though i told um, previously in the case of burdo gauge is very difficult to get the electrical output but here you can see i can get the electrical output here by using an LVDT. So, this is a several applications of LVDT even though it is basically used for the measurement of displacement. Moreover, it is has a biomedical applications even when the child is when it, it is I mean it is in mother womb. So, the it is respiratory uh, uh, signals also can be collected by the using an LVDT right. So, these are the different applications of an LVDT. Now, LVDT as I told you basic I mean uh, advantage of this type of devices is its uh, sensitivity is also there. I can increase the sensitivity by increasing the excitation voltages and uh, I can increase the um, resolution obviously, which is much higher than the conventional or other displacement sensor. So, whenever I need a better resolutions, I need a better sensitivity, we have to use LVDT instead of I mean instead of simple potentiometers or linear potentiometers which is used for measurement of displacements. With this I come to the end uh, of this uh, lecture of LVDT.
This is lesson 11 of industrial instrumentation. Uh, in this lesson, we will study the capacitive transducers. You see the capacitance transducers, the contents of this lesson, capacitance transducers as a whole, displacement transducers, capacitance transducers in the sense that a basic principle of the sensor we will discuss and capacitance transducers are basically used as a displacement transducers, level gauge or level sensor, both liquid and solid. Uh, differential pressure transducers because these differential pressure transducers are utilized in the we will see in later on in the uh, flow measurements uh, and the DPT or differential pressure transmitter is basically a differential uh, capacitive transducers. Then we have pressure pickup we will also discuss the pressure pickup as well as we will solve some problems also right. And at the end of the lesson the viewer will know viewer will know the basic principle of capacitance sensors, linearization of the sensor, differential measurements, right. This basically we will discuss in this. Now, see the capacitive transducers, a capacitor consists of two conducting metal plates separated by an insulator, right. Uh, these metal plates can be either a, a just a rectangular plates. A very thin rectangular plates or it can be a cylinder also. It looks like that you see uh, it can be a two just two parallel plates like this one. It could be a two parallel plates okay. In between we have a dielectric right and so, it happens that the capacitor consists of two conducting metal plates separated by an insulator or dielectric medium. When a voltage is applied to the metal plates, equal and opposite electric charges appear on the plates, right. And interestingly, this can be a, uh, these plates can be a cylinder also that we will see in, I mean, later on. It is not necessarily it can be, a, it should be a rectangle, it can be circular also. The plates might be cylinder also. That means, it can be have a a, a sensor like this one, one plate is like a one cylinder like this one and inside there is another plates which looks like this. So, this is another. So, we can take out the from here and here two terminals and if you measure the capacitance this is also a capacitance sensor. So, let us now go to the uh, uh, instrumentation lab and see some capacitance based sensors. This is another application of the capacitance sensor which can be utilized to measure the displacement. Usually capacitance sensor based on the uh, three different criterion. One you can vary the area of the plates, you can vary the um, displacement between the plates that means separation of the plates and also you can vary the position of the dielectric medium inside the capacitor. The particular uh, gauge which uh, you are looking at now is basically depend on the uh, displacement. You see if you uh, if you make the displacement here the separation between the capacitor plates changes. So, obviously if the separation changes the capacitance value also will change. So, that uh, obvious so if you put in a bridge so obviously the bridge unbalance output also will change. So, that bridge and minus output can be calibrated in terms of the displacement because ultimately we are not measuring the capacitance, we want to measure the displacement, which is our input that is converted to the change of very change or variation of the capacitance, and ultimately which will give you some unbalanced voltage. These are another applications of the displacement sensor based on the capacitance. Welcome back to the classroom. Basically, in instrumentation, you will find these capacitance sensors as basically three uses one is it as a displacement sensors as you have seen either permittivity variations or the variations of the area or variation between the separation between the plates number one. Number two is the level gauge or level sensors that means level will increase that means the permittivity will change. So, obviously, the permittivity change and the capacitance will change and third is the differential pressure pickup which is extensively used in all process industry for measurements of flow, okay, DP transmitter. This is basically it is called DP transmitter. We have seen that 
if I change the capacitance of the differential pickup, I will get a change of voltage that con voltage converted to the current and uh, transmitted, right. So, these are the basic three use of this capacitor sensor as instrumentation, but we have other applications as I told you earlier also we have discussed also that in this case that uh, we are using the sensor as a um, as a pressure pickup that means sound pressure measurements also we can utilize this type of capacitor sensors. Capacitor sensors are very use, I mean uh, very nice to use because it is independent of temperatures and all those things that is a great advantage of this one. It can be used in the corrosive environments all those things are very much true. But please note another two most important thing of capacitor sensors that those cables which is connected to this should be uh, we have taken. So, the parasitic sense insensitive measurements we have to make because whenever we are measuring very small capacitance value whether you are using may measuring in a bridge or LCM I mean it does not matter. So, the, uh, the parasitic I mean capacitance will influence your uh, measurements and it will pick up the signals like 50 hertz signals and all those things. So, you be very careful about those parts. So, the non shielding should be very much good. So, that uh, if at least one part of the shielding should be should be grounded. So, that the uh, you can make the measurement faithfully ok. With this I come to the end of this capacity sensors. Thank you. Thank you.